Hello and welcome back to the podcast. Thanks for listening. Welcome new listeners and uh, welcome back old listeners. This is Nate Knows Nothing. I'm Nate Armbruster here with another brand new episode of the podcast. First of all, I hope everyone's doing well. Uh, I've had a good couple of weeks here. I went to Florida for a beach wedding. Love a beach wedding. First of all, it was nice to get away in February... Was it February? I can't even remember what the date was, but it was like the last two weeks ago from this recording. Not that you know what day I'm recording this, but it would the whole point was like this is going to be nice, right? We can do this during uh, potentially cold weather. Well, you know, it's nice going to a warm state in the spring, right, or the fall. You know what I'm saying? Not in the middle of summer. I'd be dead, okay? If you knew me, if you knew what I looked like, you should. I mean, if you found this podcast, look it up. I'm as white as it gets. I'm as pale and like I it's like I don't I shouldn't be in front of the sun for more than a few minutes, okay? Or else I start to burn. I'm an indoor cat. That's what I'm trying to say. Okay? I shouldn't go outside just about at any time of year. There was overcast and I got sunburned, okay? I burn while wearing a t-shirt. All right? I'm not made for the beach. I it, the beach to me is one of those things where like I I wish I could you know, I love like beach culture, if that if that's what you want to call it. You know, people who, you know, live on the beach and they, you know, they surf or they, you know, they do beach things. They go sit out by the water and it's like it's it's fun for five minutes. I, I'm like, I need something to do. And like, I'm not very athletic, so I'm not going to surf. OK, I don't have the I don't have the, the gene for that. All right. I think it's cool when you see it done and done well. It's pretty unbelievable. However, I'm not here to ruin their good time, okay? You know, if I tried to surf, I'm going to be the guy ruining the whole vibe out there, all right? I don't belong in the water, okay? First of all, I don't go in the ocean. That's just a personal rule of mine. I just don't go. If I do go, I may be ankle deep, knee deep if I'm feeling crazy, okay? I, I just avoid it. There's no point. There's no point. If, if anything bad's going to happen in the water, it's going to happen to me. That's a fact. I'm not just, I'm not being a wimp, all right? I just, I know my role. The older I get, you got to know your place in this world. And my place is not in the ocean. And I'm all right with that, by the way. Okay. I think it's great that some people can do it. I don't know why they think they're better than me when they do it though. All right. Like I'll look at the ocean. I'll sit out on the beach. You know, we did do that. Okay. This was like one of those things. It's like this is a, It was a vacation that we didn't know we needed. You know, it was a wedding. There's a resort. It's right on the ocean. And you're like, this is beautiful, right? We should move here. And then whenever I think about that, I'm like, you know, if I lived in a place that people vacation, it would ruin that place for me, okay? If I lived in a beautiful beach town, got to see the ocean every day, sit by the water, listen to the water, read a book, you know, do the whole thing. Could I do that every day of my life? Probably not. I, I think I would get bored with it. Okay, it would ruin that town for me. That that vibe, like it's nice because I can look forward to it. Like, like this trip snuck up on us, and I was like, "Oh man, we're gonna be in Florida next week. That's gonna be fun, right?" See, that's that's the kind of energy I want to have when going on one of these trips. I don't want to live in Florida and be one. I I would be a Florida man. I would end up getting eaten by an alligator or something. I don't need to like live there. It is nice to visit though. So yeah, this uh, this beach wedding was a lot of fun. Okay, now however. Given my lack of beach ability, okay, I had to buy some new clothes. First of all, I put on some weight. I outgrew sweatpants, okay? And nothing I have that's wedding appropriate fits, okay? And beyond that, I don't have anything that's appropriate. Even if anything did fit, it's not something you wear to a beach wedding. So I had to go shopping, which is a lovely extra added expense when you when you just give into the defeat of like yeah it looks like I'm uh, up a size, and I better buy some clothes that I'll probably wear once, but I'll tell you what, it was fun. I don't regret it. However, this is the first like. Typically, I'm the guy. Every time I go to the beach, I get a little more comfortable with it. Okay, I've done shows in Florida before. I've tried the beach thing, and it's cool. Like I said, but the first time I went to Florida. This is like the first time I was at a real beach, you know, on the ocean. None of this Lake Michigan Midwest beach, you know what I mean? A real beach, salt water. I show up in like jeans, 
tennis shoes, you know, no sandals. Why would I wear sandals? So they, you know, they, you should take your shoes off. What do you, you know, first of all, you're going to get sand all in your shoes. Okay. They're not made for this, this terrain. And second, you know, it's just, it's just, it's weird. You look like a cop or something. You know, I'm the guy, like I, I've ruined, I've it just, it's like getting back to the whole, I just, I know my place in this world and it's not on a beach. So I show up with these, you know, shoes and socks and they're like, you should, you shouldn't be wearing those. So I take them off and then I burn the bottoms of my feet. So I learned my lesson, man. I bought some sandals. I bought some beach friendly attire and it was a successful trip. I didn't get sunburned. We, everyone had a blast. This wedding was beautiful. It's right on the beach sunset on the Gulf. We're on the Gulf side. So the sun setting behind them. Unbelievable, right? The kind of beach wedding you want to be at perfect weather, just enough overcast. So it's not, you know, too, too hot. What's funny though, is like this resort, you know, they got like, you know, people lined up like employees to block traffic you know because the photo op you know you want all the photos so you don't want people in the background playing volleyball you know so you know but you're just on a beach that anybody can be walking on so and it was a 15 minute ceremony you know it's not like it's not like this was ruining anyone's day and then and you know that's the thing is like it's such a public wedding when you're on the beach like that that people like just observing or like all about it. You know, this makes me wish I got married on the beach, you know, because now all of a sudden you're like a celebrity on the beach, you know, everyone's buying you drinks. People are like, aren't you the guy that just got married? That's a nice perk to have for a night. Okay. But you're dealing with, you know, all of the outside factors, you know, you could have a crazy guy run through, you don't know what's going to happen on the beach. A boat could, you know, float by in the background, whatever, anything could happen, you know? And sure enough, I don't know if this had anything to do with this ceremony. It was almost like it was planned, but an airplane flew very low and obviously not like a a big plane. But I mean, you know, I I thought it was going to land on the beach. That's how low it was. I was like, oh, my God, is this plane going to just crash behind the wedding? Now, it didn't, thankfully, but it was one of those things where I'm like, this is going to be nuts. It was almost as if they scheduled it to take photos. That's why I'm wondering. But I feel like that's that's a little far to go to hire a pilot. I think you can just do that with a drone these days. So I don't know. I got to find out. But yeah, this plane that flew by, I was like, holy crap, it's going to crash. And that's going to be as memorable as the wedding. Okay. I feel like that story, that would just talk about ruining your wedding. (laughs) Okay. A plane crashing right behind you. A hell of a photo op, by the way. This was the first time I think I had like, a legit vacation in a while, you know, where I did nothing, where like, I actually like didn't work or anything, like didn't do anything, just did vacation stuff. I ate, drank and sat on the beach. And I got to tell you, it's pretty nice. No obligations, nothing to do. Every, all your friends are in the same uh, hotel. You know, you felt like a kid. It was, uh, it was so much fun. Now, this is the thing about traveling. Okay. It was in Tampa and St. Pete beach, was where the wedding was at, right? So we flew into Tampa. By the way, I don't know. I I feel like this just maybe it just happens all the time around me. I don't know, or if just we're all just animals again. But I thought that during the pandemic we all learned about germs and like, you know, just maybe respecting each other. I know obviously people are pretty you know crazy these days, but. I feel like if there's one thing we can all agree on as a society, it's like, you know, maybe, maybe don't sneeze in your hand. I feel like that's like the one thing, like, no matter how you feel about the pandemic or the effects of it or whether or not you think whatever caused it, how to prevent it, whatever you think, I feel like regardless, it is fact that that's disgusting, right? I mean, and people are still doing this, man. I was at the airport. And it's just like, it was like the first thing I saw, you know, walking through the airport. Guy sneezed in his hand and like, but like wiped. It wasn't just like he covered his hand. It was like he sneezed and he like cupped his hand and he like pinched his nose and wiped. Like he really, he really got in there and he, and he was not urgent. Now, don't get me wrong. Mistakes happen, you know? So, I mean, I've sneezed in my hand, but the thing is, the first thing I do if that ever happens, is I go wash my hands with soap. 
five times because it's disgusting. Like, I don't even like my own snot on my hand. You know, it's disgusting. And watching this guy just wipe his nose and just probably go touch everything I'm going to touch in the airport. You know, disgusting. This is the first time, and I'm not a confrontational person, but this is the first time I said out loud, you can ask my wife, I was like, Jesus. I just I just said that as a genuine reaction. I go, what? What are we doing? Like, I thought there was just one thing, this one thing we could start doing to just not be disgusting animals. God, it was so gross, man. And the airport already grosses me out as it is because it's so germy. Yeah, that's so that's how I started my trip, right? Then we land, and this is the thing. Every city you land in is different, right? Tampa's a pretty decent-sized city. Obviously, they have Uber there. And the destination we were staying at is about 45 minutes away from the airport in, like, rush hour traffic, maybe a little longer. And Uber was $98. Another thing. That's too much money, Uber. And I know it's like supply and demand surge pricing, but that's still ridiculous. That's literally the day rate on a car rental. Okay, that's like, I could just rent a car for that price, honestly. And I can't believe it. And we pay for it, you know, because we're all dumb. We have to. We don't really have a choice, really. It's so ridiculous. I, I just, I don't understand the point. Like, at a certain point, it's like, this is just ridiculous, you know? You, they should cap it at something, right? Something reasonable. I, I don't know, 50 bucks to go? That's a dollar a minute? Maybe? I don't know. I don't know what the right answer is, but I feel like that's ridiculous. So, literally, a cab, for the first time since the existence of Uber in my life, was cheaper. We took a cab, 80 bucks flat. That was with tip. So, 60, yeah, and then I, I tipped him, like, 15, 20 bucks. And a cab was actually better. And get this. The ride back to the airport was even cheaper because we left at 4.30 in the morning, Sunday, the day after the wedding. Okay? Didn't even sleep. It was one of those, you know? So, I don't know. You know, I'm in a city I'm unfamiliar with. It's a beach town. I don't know how active. You know, we, we got to leave the airport. We have to leave for the airport at 4.30 in the morning. And I'm already... And it's like before the wedding. I'm like, okay, before we start, like... Letting loose, drinking, and having a good time here. Okay, we have to know. We have to have a plan for the morning. Because as long as there's a plan, you know, we'll be all right. Our bags are already packed. We just have to wake up and go. So I go down to the front desk, and I'm like, hey, what's, uh, you know, what's the situation around here? Is, is Uber, like, active? If or, you know, because some cities, it's like, nah, good luck finding an Uber. And there's nothing worse, because I've been in this situation before. There's nothing worse than waking up early for a flight and there's no Ubers available because, you know, I don't know. I feel like any smart, I mean, if you're Ubering at four in the morning, like I feel like people got to Uber are desperate for money at some point. I don't know anyone who does it because they want to. I feel like you just end up doing it. So no one's really doing it at 4 a.m. in most cities. Now, Tampa's a pretty large city, but we're like 40 minutes away. So I was like, I don't know what the Uber situation here is. And the front desk gal is like, I don't know, man. She literally said like, nah, I don't know. Sometimes, and like, she wasn't very helpful. It's so funny. Like, this is my, this is my boomer take, right? This is when I start to feel like, you know, because obviously, you know, si you know, uh, situations like this. I'm like, okay, look, you're making minimum wage. I get it. I get it. I, you don't have to like your job. I, I don't expect you to roll off the red carpet for me. But I asked you a pretty basic question, you know, like no, no effort to. I mean, I'm just having a conversation. I don't need you to get me the Uber, you know? I don't need your actual help. I just need to know information. And she was like, nah, I don't know. And I was like, that's nice. Thanks. And uh, <laughs> and it's funny because, like, it just kind of fell flat. I just kind of go, so you just don't know what the deal is? She goes, no. She goes, I've used it before, but, you know, I haven't really used it at 4 in the morning around here, so I don't know. And I'm like, okay. I guess that's the answer. I guess that's, you know, what's she going to do? But it's a hotel, you know, shouldn't that be like a, you know, just even even BS me, you know, just like make something up. And honestly, I feel like the obvious answer to that question, because it was the answer I just made up in my head, which is what I would have done if I worked there. I'd have been like, you know, four in the morning, it's hit and miss around here. Uh, you can risk it or maybe you could schedule one ahead of time. But there you go. That's it. That's all you had to say. 
And by the way, for the, how much does room cost? I mean, it's it's resort. It's so funny. It's like this is the idea of a resort. I don't know if it's just Florida or if it's the area of Florida we were in, but they call it a resort. And I'm like, this hotel room is smaller than a Marriott hotel room. I don't know how this. There's no resort vibes here. I mean, it's a resort vibe in that it's on the ocean and we had a view of the ocean. But this room, pretty standard room. You know, they were really stretching the word resort here. But they're charging resort prices, which again. Worth it. I I don't regret staying there. However, I thought that was like the whole thing. I'm like, here I am, like spending the extra dollar to stay at a nice place. We're not doing the cheap route. This is the best part, though. I go, I just go to the next person and I go, hey, what what's the Uber situation? She goes, oh, you know what? Uh, good luck getting an Uber in the morning, but we can get we can help you get a cab. So she gives me a number for a cab company, and I call this cab company. And I go, hey, I need a ride at four in the morning, fully expecting this guy to be like, yeah, you can go straight to hell. I just, I wouldn't believe any order for a cab. I mean, that'd be a weird prank. But I, as a cab owner, I'd be like, you sure you got to leave at four in the morning? You sure you're going to be up? You sure you're going to be awake? And it's one of those things where I'm like, okay, let's go to the wedding. We have fun. We let loose. And then four, four thirty in the morning, I'm like, let's go down to the front desk and see if this cab is there. And sure enough, the guy's like, are you Nate? And this guy also looked like a guy that would drive a cab at four in the morning. Okay. Hasn't slept in days and he smelled like ass. I'll just say it. And great guy. Nice guy. But man, this guy reeked. But what are you going to do? You know, it's four in the morning. Uh, you can drive me anywhere, you know, whatever. Just give me to the airport. <laughs> it was uh, It was a successful trip, though. I'm glad I went. Cut to last weekend, so that was two weeks ago. Here we are, catching up. Last weekend, I did a show in Chelsea, Michigan, at the old Robin Hills Farm. It's just, it's an event venue that does like weddings and all sorts of stuff. But this night they were doing comedy, and I had been there before, and I remember it being a great time. It was packed to the rafters, good crowd, good show all around. I was really looking forward to going back and. This show was fun. It's just one of these things where, like, the first time I went, it exceeded my expectations. So I was expecting the same. This time around, it was a little different. First of all, much, much, much lighter turnout, which it is what it is. It doesn't mean it's bad. Sometimes that's that's better. If it's a small crowd, but they really enjoy themselves, that can be a blast. But, man, did I eat it. Oh, it was a rough one, everybody. It was like, you know, and I've, you know, I've bombed plenty. Okay. I mean, anybody, who, if they, if you know anyone who does stand up and they don't, they tell you they don't bomb, they're lying or they're delusional. Okay. Now, bombing means a lot of different things. I, you know, I knock on wood, I've never been like booed off stage, but I've been like, I mean, I'm talking crickets, like no one's enjoying themselves. Now, sometimes that silence can mean like, hey, we're listening. And we're enjoying it. We're just not laughing, which is the most frustrating audience for me because I, I think they hate me the whole time. And that's what happened Saturday night, man. Last weekend, I get up on stage and, you know, it's already, it's a little warm in there. And I've got like a long sleeve shirt on, you know, and I'm, I'm a little, just a little warm. And I get on stage and the show's going just okay. Like the openers did great, good shows. They were getting laughs and like, Everybody was having a good time, and then I got up there, and man, silence. I'm talking crickets. And I mean, I'm, I haven't sweat like this since I first started stand-up, where I'm like, oh my god, I suck. Like, this is so bad. And the problem is I keep, like, bringing it up on stage. I'm like, do you guys, like, do you like me? And I, I get all insecure, and I'm like, I'm having a meltdown. And it, I mean, you know, I'm exaggerating. I, I'm exaggerating my reaction to it. I definitely remember not getting... There were moments where I was like, this is this is bad. This is actually going horribly wrong. <laughs> I got through it. You know, you do. You just, you learn how to bomb in a way that's like, okay, there's at least something here. You know, like, it, and the most important thing is the people that booked me were happy. You know, the venue was happy. The guy that paid me was happy. And I, I, I was so disappointed in my, <laughs> In myself, I couldn't even blame the crowd really well. I feel like I can, but I, I feel like that's a cop out too. Cause like the other comedians got a much better response than I did. Like much more laughs. Uh, if we're considering like how much of their stuff 
went well versus my, you know, and everybody had different styles. There, there were different like demographics too. It was a nice balanced show. There was, it wasn't just three white dudes. You know what I mean? It was a very well booked show. And I, and I went up and just ate it. Oh, and I get off stage and I'm, I'm my, I sweat through my shirt, which is never, I mean, it hasn't happened in a long time. Okay. And I was panicking. I felt so bad. I thought I was just never going to be invited back. And, you know, I felt like such a loser, you know, and I'm standing in the back of the room, licking my wounds, talking to the other comics. I'm like, man, that was so bad. And then they're doing the thing you're supposed to. It's all right, man. You know, it's, it's, I I didn't like them either. (laughs) You know, they're trying to make me feel better about myself. And all of a sudden, people from the crowd are walking up to me like, hey, we really enjoyed the show. And I don't think, and it seems sincere, okay, because I did plug my email list. I got zero signups, which is, whew, that's humbling. Nobody, they're like, we like you. Not enough to know when you're coming to town again, okay? I don't need to ever know. <laughs> if I see you, I see you. And, but people came up to me and were like, said really nice things. And I'm like, it's so confusing because it's like, uh, it's like, you you didn't really laugh, you know, and, and it was a smaller crowd. So I know who was enjoying it and who, you know, some people were losing it. Some people, I had some people in the palm of my hand, they were dying. You'd have thought that they knew who I was and they paid top dollar to see me. And they, you know, they've been following me for years. No, those people didn't come up to me. They left at a good time. People that just stared at me the entire time as if to say, go on, hurry up. We have to get home. It's getting late. Yeah, you know, it's a small town. And so I, you know, I, this, it's so confusing when they come up to you after and they're like, we really enjoyed the show. That was so funny. We love this joke. This guy's quoting it. You know, he's like telling me a joke back. He goes, this joke where you said this, this, and this. And I'm like, are you guys overcompensating for the fact that it looked like I was going to jump off a bridge or something? Like, are you guys just trying to make me feel better? But no, I, I guess they really enjoyed themselves. And I, uh, I guess what I'm trying to say is if you if you like a a, co- a comedian or their jokes, just laugh. None of this. I'll listen and then tell you if it's funny. God, it was so it was oh, it was so confusing. It was but it was funny. It was I guess it all in all it was a fine night, but man, it was it was not the experience that I enjoy <laughs> having. But hey, it's going to happen, right? And I'm I guess I'm glad it happened there. Hopefully it doesn't happen uh, this weekend or next weekend, you know. But uh, that's that, folks. That's everything. I, I think I caught you up on everything. Uh, everything going on in my life now. Uh, here's my favorite part. Uh, sign up for my email list. As I mentioned, I, I'm trying to uh, build a strong fan base. And you guys are the first people that I want to know about where I'm going to be. Did that make sense? What I'm trying to say is sign up for the email list. You'll get first dibs on specials, podcast episodes, this, that. You'll know when I'm touring near you. I would love to see you out at a live show. Uh, If you're not interested, that's fine, too. Uh, I'm shocked that you're still listening to this. Thank you. Thanks for listening. Uh, Follow me on social media. Tell your friends about it. Subscribe, rate, review. I would love to see you on the road sometime. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you next week with another brand new episode of Nate Knows Nothing.